This is Astinian's doing, I'm sure of it. We should ride its flow and see where it leads. Astinian broke wind for all our sakes. A powerful gale has delivered you to another island. The scion, the other scions should arrive before long. That's how we get from place to place. So what's, is this going to be the next civilization then? Like that was the dragon civilization. Is this going to be like a different civil, the home of like a different dead civilization? The fact that that sightseeing log told me that that last place was specifically the alpha star or the, the, the dragon place makes me think this will be a different civilization represented here. Alpha, no. He, he did it. He found a way forward for us. That's your Astinian. The dragons remain trapped within a prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war, and yet Astinian knew them better than most. Their story was his story. He was a man of honor and a dear friend, willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. They're really selling that he's dead. I, I'm going to... Maybe he... Oh God, I... Sorry, I'm just... I'm really... This is like knocking me for a loop here. Alizé. And he's still fighting Alphano. He's still fighting Alphano, just like Thancred. That's what I believe. That's... Yeah, I... Not just his memory. Like, I think he's still... He's still... The, he's still here. No, never mind. That's not what Alice is saying. Their sacrifices are why we can survive here. Why we still have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they're unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Stola. Alize is right. We must press on. For their sake. Hmm. Hmm. Stola. Though it pains me to say, we can ill afford to stop and grieve our comrades passing. No, there will be time enough after. Alizé. We have to keep going. Even if Astinian isn't here to see it, I'm sure Alphino wouldn't want to disappoint him. It's the music that gets me thinking that maybe they actually are dead. This is like a, a happy farewell music. Like a let's remember him fondly and press on in his spirit music. Rian J. No choice have we but to march onward lest we squander their noble sacrifices. Raha. Feign bravery with bold words is a simple matter, but without the strength of will to match, we are powerless against Dynamis. Agreed. That's and that's what made Orianje break through, or Breda uh, Estinian break through it, because that was he believed that with all his soul. That was like the sum of his life experience. What he, that encounter with that dragon, Brahatia. Not less than unshakable conviction will suffice, which makes me question if I am up to the task. Did you play Shadowbringers? Because I played Shadowbringers. You are up to the task. Believe me. How long did you spend before you had to... You were you went through the entirety of that life? You went through ent the entirety of that post-apocalyptic... Well, you didn't go through a, the post-apocalyptic life, but you spent time there. You had the earlier life uh, where, we, where we first met you. You had a hundred years as the Crystal Exarch alone. What are those tentacles up there? Um... You had a hundred years as the Crystal Eggs are kind of doing everything you can. You had this whole plan where you're going to... Sorry, I'm, I won't hear any, any anti-Graha TSFs, even from Graha. I think that was everyone. Al Alpha, no. Roads, Alpha, Vud. Roads paved. Sacrifice. I hope this is... I hope they have... I, I don't know how screen readers work in 14, but I hope they have some kind of Take that into account. I'm sure they did. Alphano has regained his composure and is ready to proceed. As Ishtola and Alize said, we must continue. Hmm. 
Notice the change in our surroundings. Perhaps the, this is the memory of a different, altogether different world. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. It would be prudent to learn more of it then. Tread carefully, lest we lose our footing in this sand. Ba, 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 da, ba. Pigeon, you need a change of wardrobe. There we go. Hopefully the others won't see this as mocking Astinian, but rather as honoring him. Even if he's not dead, he deserves that honor. I just, I can't get over this music. It's so, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. What is that? Rifting Aya. The hell? Was that... It, was its head just floating disembodied? Is that Catastrophe up there also? Those are Catastrophe-style mobs. The, um... The Final Fantasy V boss that was in the... In the, uh... Delta Scape. And there's, like, feet under the drifting Aya. What are you? You're like a... Those eyes and the shiny metallic. Look at this cool design. Okay, okay, let's. Other one. Catastrophe is other one. Alize. Sand. Sand everywhere. It's rough and coarse. Alphano. If not for the light emitted by these glyphs, I may well have overlooked this monolith. Oh, I overlooked it too. Even though everyone's just staring at it. What's up, guys? What are you doing? Yeah, Graha. Another seemingly barren world. For a mercy, the air is nowhere near as stale, but still quite dry, and the sand will no doubt prove bothersome in due time. This is some desert civilization, maybe. Stola, if you were worried about my vision, you needn't be. I can see quite, still see quite well. I guess maybe these civilizations brought their ether with them? I think we talked to Alize, yeah? Yeah. Um, Ariange. Were it not for the violet crystal embedded in the surface, it would, it would appear as ordinary stone. A curious script hath been etched upon them. Alas, it is not a language with which I am familiar. Stola, I cannot say I recognize it either. Rahatia, nor I. The dragons, from what I recall, preserve their knowledge in song and eschew the written word entirely, so we may assume this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Meteon claimed the dragon's world suffered a slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way towards a similar end. Alize, what do you suppose that is over there? Oh, that tower. Yeah, uh... I don't know, it sort of looks almost like the, um... No, never mind. I was gonna say it sort of looks like the Keeper on the Lake dungeon, but that was because there was a dragon coiled around a spire, and this is not... It's, it wasn't an actual thing. Never mind. Alphano, I'm not sure. It's hard to make out at this distance, but its surface seems to bear the same crystals as this monument. Yeah, that light purple. Alize, meaning there's a chance we may find whoever built them both. We should go have a look. Come on. I'm glad they're reusing the catastrophe model because this is... I don't talk... I try not to talk too, too much about World of Warcraft on this, but... There was some. There was a widely mocked statement from World of Warcraft that one of the recent zones was the most alien thing they've ever constructed, and it was just like a forest with some solid with water you can walk on and floating pillars. And I just I look at a place like this with the different like memories of different civilizations and the stars and the destroyed planets and the purples and violets. This is alien. 
And that's not even like, that's not a full WoW knock. That's a knock on that particular WoW comment. Like some of the Burning Crusade zones, like Netherstorm, were as more, more alien than pretty much, were just gorgeous things. More alien than anything I've seen in a while. Ghostly figure, anyway. So you are a, a non-hostile Aya. Kind of a black mage looking thing, like a Vivi looking thing with the glowy eyes and the lack of facial features. At least borrowing from that aesthetic. Hail Traveler, this is a most unexpected occurrence. You seem unusually friendly. Alize, oh, um, hello there. Is this your home? Indeed it is. Ah, uh, forgive me, I had forgotten. An exchange of introductions is expected when first meeting those with whom one is unacquainted. When the vibration of vocal folds was still required to convey our thoughts and intention, Ea, I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. Look at this thing. Though it is not entirely applicable given our present state, you are welcome to use this appellation. As for nomenclature to address my individual person, I believe it would be pronounced of Kuj. Hello, Kof Kuj. Yes, Kof Kuj of the Aya. And this music is like... It's like music you'd find with a pixie that could be mischievous. Or that could be... Someone that could be a monster, could be a ghost, or could be a friend. And you don't know yet, but it's something not expected, not normal. We have encountered... Ishtolo. We have encountered beings that communicate intermittently through, th through thought, but never one that is wholly without voice. I presume we are having this conversation via the medium of ether, or dynamis, as this space is suffused with vast quantities of it. Fascinating in either case. Kofkuj, I gather your response to my presence is positive, then. That is well, for there is something I wish to ask of you. Like yourselves, we Aya are ether-based life forms. Therefore, it may be surmised that your bodies are of comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. This guy, I'm making Kof Kuja Moon a knight from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, basically. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective perception of the five senses. Sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. In total, I have prepared 198 billion, 712 million, 180,000 through 827. Uh, this is a job for Orion J. Raha. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Off Cooch. Ah, my apologies. I have omitted a great many details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispensed with our corporeal vessels long ago, we have rediscovered a need for the flesh as and have... Wasn't... Didn't one of the civilizations that... That Medion mentioned say that it had tried to become infinite. Maybe this was part of that. Or tried to get it away from finite time and all that sort of stuff. We have in, in, re rediscovered a need for the flesh and have endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to the passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate, but... We have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may compromise our ability to interact with our physical environment. Rahatia, and the reason you need to regain your corporeal forms? Yeah, that's actually a good question. Why, to bring an end to our... Of course, this is Ultima Thule. To bring an end to our existence, of course. I don't know why anyone would want to become infinite. That sounds like one of the most horrible punishments ever. Though need is perhaps too strong a word. It would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves through use of etheric exsanguinators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalists among us believe proper death requires an inescapable sense of impermanence in one's final moments. An experience found only with bodies of flesh. 
So you're really thinking through the mechanics of what makes a good death. Or what makes a, a, last, a lasting death. You really don't want to come back in any way, shape, or form. Shola, we should very much like to hear more of your plans. In exchange, we will answer any, our, any questions you have to the best of our ability. I love that animation, the head-popping animation. Hmm, such an exchange of information would pr indeed prove useful. Very well. To ensure efficacious exchange, I hereby invite you to our home. Yes, the abode of the Ea, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume you cons your consent to answer questions is indicative of a tacit approval of our plans, in which case your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I mean, we're not going to turn you down, but probably try to persuade you otherwise. I must caution you, however, to be mindful of the Aea wandering the desert. Their desire for bodies of flesh could be described as overzealous. Now, if you would follow me... Alizé, this is going rather smoothly. Not that I'm complaining, mind. Even so, we mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. Though I failed, uh, Ishtola, though I failed to s see why a civilization so seemingly advanced would choose to unmake all they've created. At any rate, we will find no answers dallying here. Let us be on our way. It's wild. Utterly wild. Hollow of the Flesh. Luminion. We've seen this model before, I think, but I can't, it's hard for me. I can't think of where. Was it Azislaw? No, I don't think so. Where, where, where did we see these before? Another sightseeing point. I thought this was... I, I just came over here. For some reason, I thought this was an ether current at first. I, my bad. Ostracon Tria. The sector is a recreation of the third civilization encountered by Medion and her sisters. Known collectively as the Aea, the entities which reside here have cast off their corporeal shells and endure eternally in purely spiritual form. An awareness of the universe's inevitable end, however, has blighted their immortal gift with existential misery. So I think this is that race I was thinking of. The witch. Which uh, was trying to get away from... They're trying to escape finite time. Abode of the Aea. It almost looks like... Like pods or fruit or something. What cool architecture. Raha. More violet colored crystals. I cannot place my finger on it, but there is something unsettling about them. I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, everything about this is a race that wants to find oblivion and is walking around as spirits that remove their heads for, as a way to say hello. So, but I mean, aside from that, there's nothing that jumped out at me about about those crystals is ominous. But now there is. Stola, I should not be surprised their conception of the village is so different from ours, and yet. Ariange. The Isle of Dragons was shrouded in the silence of the dead, yet the stillness here doth suggest the Aea are, by and large, merely sleeping. Yeah, the Kof Kuj definitely sounds like they're still in contact with the others, like easy contact. Alphano, something tells me we have very different, defini different, different definitions of the word abode. Alizé, he said there would be others, but I don't know what I was expecting. Are there spirits inside those lamps? Inside those crystals? Cough Kuj. Welcome to our abode. Most of our compeers you will find remain idle in their domiciles, though your quizzical expressions indicate my phrasing is unclear. I speak, of course, of the violet crystalline constructs hanging from the stone structures there. Ashtola. You say they remain idle, but what of your work to regain corporeal bodies? Are they, like, thinking of it? Are they communicating with it, like, internally or s literally sleeping on it? An astute question, and understandable given your finite nature. 
We have no desire to pursue our research, for it is no longer necessary. Then what are you doing? I thought you were pursuing research. If in our idleness we are struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That is why I was present for your arrival, and why I continue to engage with you still. Ah, so you're not trying, but if it's there, you're gonna, you'll deal with it, but you're not gonna try for anything. But while the others are not currently in a motile state, rest assured they would not object were you to disturb their respite. You need only cast your thoughts toward one of their crystalline domiciles to communicate. So they've really given up. But it's a very different type of giving up than we saw from the dragons. Even should they elect not to emerge, you need but cast your thoughts to the crystals to communicate with the Aea within. Okay. Oh, there's specific domiciles. Gotcha. Attuning to the crystalline domicile. You cast your thoughts toward the crystalline domicile, but there's no response. You, you wish to speak? Very well. Pray... Um, a moment, if you would. So, are we going to talk to, like, knock on all the doors and then have, like, a town meeting, maybe? I assume that we we're going to just talk to them individually. Why seek our end, you ask? If you wish to know, I will tell you. Just a moment, I must remember... What form did I take when I last emerged? This is... It's a little... It's hitting a little close to comfort for someone who stays home a lot of the time and is like, wait, how do I act? How do I dress around people again? Ugh. Ah. The strange moaning comes and goes, but soon fades into silence. Alphano, what have you found? I suppose there is a logic to creatures composed of spiritual energy utilizing crystals as living spaces, but nevertheless surprising to see. That's a fair assessment. Cough Cooge. Did your inquiries yield satisfactory responses? Not really. I mean, maybe they're on their way, though. I see. If they fail to answer, then it is likely because their minds have unraveled due to prolonged idleness. They are not but concentrated ether now. Worry not, there are no others who have need for of those lodgings, and they will not prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more important yeah, that was my that was my concern, whether they were gonna vacate their housing. But more importantly, you said some few did answer your request for an audience, yes? I imagine they will be with us ere long. Yay, they're this is unsettling in a very different way from the dragons. Flesh abandoned. Alize. I had no luck, but everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few AI have awakened. Excuse me for a second. Sorry, quick quick uh, break to scratch a, a shark that was clawing and biting at me. Ah, there they are. The whole squad is here. May I introduce you to La Lok, Dudik, and Ninij. Ninij. Hello. You're so cute. Balak, it has been too long, Kof Kuj. I dare say Sadr the Sadr Iv. Sadr the fourth? Sadr four, yeah. The pla okay, a planet. Has since completed an orbit. Kof Kuj, indeed. Until the travelers brought it to my attention, I hadn't noticed how unraveled they had some had become. Wait, what?
Oh, no, I thought they were saying, like, how one. I thought they were talking about Sodder 4 is a planet and therefore it'd become... Unre okay, no, no. They're just saying it's been a while and, yeah, some of the people have been... You know, they're almost gone. Neneej. Travelers. Ah, of course, of course. The ones who wish to know why we seek to regain corporeal forms. Afkuj. The matter or truth of the matter is as plain to see as the neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirement for scientific objectivity. Thus did I bid them awaken you. Raha. Am I the only one who struggles to tell who's speaking? You are. I mean, I have the help of the names, but I don't know which person is Nanej among the group. Rianjay. Nay, thou art not. In the absence of corporeal forms and the divergence they afford, mayhap such similarity in voice is unavoidable. It's a good point. Udik. By the way, Kofkuj, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That f which one is expected to do when receiving guests? A matter of proper form. <laughs> Kofkuj. Ah, uh, yes. So long has it been, it had completely escaped my mind, and yet it still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Again, me when a guest comes over. I love the quick cuts back and forth. You deek. Neither do I. Pity. I was hoping you would. Nanij. Perhaps we can search the archives for the answer. No, don't worry about it. Let's just... Kofkuj. Come now, Nanij. The archives have long been frozen, lest we subject ourselves to further dolor. Surely you recall that much. <laughs> Lalak. I wish these were a, tri were, a, were a tribe we could do quests for. Ah, of course. Food. The custom is to serve food. Beings of flesh such as they must regularly replenish their ether. By contributing to the replenishment, we communicate our friendly intention. Ah, that's right, that's right. It... Me looking up a YouTube guide before a guest comes over to remember how to treat them. We duly invite you to join us in communal repast, after which we may engage in leisurely conversation. Alphano. We have the chance to learn something, then I see no reason to decline. What kind of food are they going to make for you? A ghost sandwich? Kofkuj. Excellent. If you would care to follow, we shall feast you on the purest ether. What is ether going to taste like? Nenij. To think I had forgotten what become of had become of the archives. How much of my has my essence deteriorated, deteriorated since last I was awake? Not that I am averse to having my mind fade away in this manner. It isn't so unlike the natural degradation of one's flesh. How delightful. Of course, that's delightful. Dudik. Throughout the universe, but few races have completely shed their flesh as we have. As a result, we seldom receive visitors from other systems. Extreme differences can inhibit meaningful interaction, you see, and none more so than those which affect communication. Most entities, for example, cannot even comprehend our words. You are rare indeed in your ability to do so. You avail yourselves of dynamis, yes? It is an impressive application, even if it is ultimately pointless like all the rest. At least you're friendly nihilists. Lalak. How much ether would be adequate for your kind, I wonder? I recall there's a fine line between optimal satiation and violent sickness. It's tough to do, it's tough to tell sometimes. It's tough to tell what the line is. Rahatia. We were told to stand wherever we like. Strikes me as less of a meal and more of a ritual. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be like cooking up stuff. I think it sounds like it's just they're going to suffuse your bodies with ether. Orianje. I don't even know where they get the ether because this place is like Dynamis Central, right? Judging by the construction of this facility, it would seem the AI draw directly upon the ether. Alize. Ether, they said, but I can't help but feel a bit nervous. Understandable. Alpha, no. 
If they are thus unable to re able to replenish their ether, the loss of vital sustenance isn't likely to be the cause of their demise. Yeah, it's it's desire. It's <clears throat> Stola. If it, if it is as I suspect in this so-called feast, actually, let us just see for ourselves. Do not. We're not like to come to harm. I don't think so either. I think it's just they're just gonna put some energy in us. Kof Kuj, what do you got for us? This facility is where we where we replenish our ether. There is no particular name for it, but we traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. The restaurant at the end of the universe. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, the space will soon be awash with purest ether. Please absorb as much as you like. Okay. I will take my spot here and get ready to chow down. This is going to be like the, the Chipotle of Ultima Thule. You brace yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether, but nothing seems to happen. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer. Okay. Are we getting trolled? You brace yourself again, but again, nothing seems to happen. <clears throat> ah, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Shola. Just as I had suspected, as meticulously as one might recreate the Aya's home, home world, this is Ultima Thule. One cannot simply generate ether here. Okay. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact. To the very truth of their existence, much like the phantoms of the recreated Amarat. However appearances may seem, we must ever be mindful that it is the memories of the dead with whom we deal. I got that with the dragons, but I didn't quite... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. But it's harder for me to... It was harder for me to, to remember that because they're already kind of... In, they're, they're, even their true forms were incorporeal. These are memories of incorporeal forms. But we should probably, like, thank them for the meal and all. Off Cooch. So, did you have your fill of ether? Stola. Oh, no. She's... Okay, she's being very tactful about it. Alas, we couldn't absorb it. A deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Off Cooch. Oh, how very unfortunate. May I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Chipotle, you say? Through your mouths, you say? How very primitive and quaint. To think that their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but draw in sustenance besides. Such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. How primitive. I love these. I love these. This, the Aya. Ariange. Though we regrettably could not partake of your magnificent feast, rest assured we mo feel your welcome most keenly. In the course of acquainting ourselves with your sophisticated ways, however, we could not fail but wonder, wherefore do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh and thence to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? Nice job, Arianje. Kofkuj. Your flesh, you flesh and blood beings are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. They really are like the like the smarmy moon tonight. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Aya yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors de dedicated themselves to the pursuit of, of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending all limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. This is that race. From the tangible such as land to the intangible such as labor, there exist myriad hindrances to progress, but most confining of all was the flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressingly middlingly, you see. Too short to enjoy unhurried lives, yet too long to be considered disposable. Furthermore, to maintain, simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. But we mean, what we managed to solve this problem... After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives, untroubled by the failures of the flesh. Thus changed, we had more time and freedom to continue our scientific pursuits. We went on to make ever greater strides in our quest to transcend all limitations, 
until we finally decided to challenge the last of them, the Limit of Knowledge. Limit of Knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. Ah. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all extant phenomenon, and thus predict the future. If we could but achieve this, we believed we would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. Ishtola, and did you find the answers you sought? I have no idea how it's going to answer. Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed to us a fundamental truth. That there's no way to... that. Yeah, we Median told us this truth, or told me this truth anyway. Knowledge, not la lock. Knowledge of said truth is essential for the continuation of our conversation. If you would learn more, we will share it with you. Udique. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, it would be unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. Yeah, we got Prime Directive Dudeek over here. Nanej. They are possessed of corporeal forms, their lives readily ended. As those who have gone before, is it not our duty to warn them? Mama, mama, mama. what thinkest thou? I mean, everything's going to die. The universe is eventually going to end. I think that's where they're going with this, right? It has to be. Like, they predicted the future of the universe, and it's going to eventually end. Kafkuj, we have deliberated and come to a consensus. If you are resolved to know it, we will disclose to you the truth we discovered. The truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the bounds of the abode. A place called Elegea. Interesting name for the place to reveal the truth of the universe. Elegea, presumably off of Elegy and... Elegy being a song for when you die. Or a song in memory of the dead. Some I don't remember exactly what an elegy is, I guess. Alphano. It's true that a lack of knowledge can beget fear. Therefore, in theory, by acquiring all knowledge, it may be possible to attain peace. I mean, they don't seem full of anxiety. They want to die, but they don't seem anxious. Or they're a little anxious, maybe. But as Heidelin told us, all those peoples who attempted to free their worlds from life's woes meant met with failure. And the Ea are among them, as their presence here attests. The tale we are about to hear will not be a happy one. That's right, everyone's prepared for this. Alizé. You may be intimately familiar with the problem. Know it like the back of your hand, but be powerless to solve it. In the course of my struggles, I've often been keenly made keenly aware of this fact. I wonder, have the Aya never felt the same frustration? Raha. To define the laws of creation would have been no small feat, even for the Aya. Nay, even having eternal life and having hence no state sense of haste would only make it harder. Yeah, they, they're like the Ents or the Q. More like the Q. Such tremendous drive for knowledge that one they must once must have had, and I struggled to reconcile it with the listless beings before us. Whatever answers they found, it did not bring them happiness, that is for sure. Ryanjay. Like her master, Ishtola seeketh the truth of creation. How will the truth of the Ea, who uncovered all, only to desire the end, fall upon her ears? I have a feeling that someone feline is not making it off this island. Stola. Fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let us learn what has led such an enlightened people to this indolent end. This is not going to be great for you. Stola. Before we hear the climax of Aya's tale, mayhap I should speak of... Or on second thought, it would only be a distraction. We'll talk more when the time is right. Where are you going with that? Alphano. It is true that a lack of knowledge can beget fear. Therefore, in theory, by acquiring all... Oh, no, we've seen this already. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
Hurry on, Jay. Where knowledge leads, not a letter this time, but a little infinity symbol. Something seems to be weighing on Uriange's mind. Ere we, ere we join the Ea, there is one trifling matter I would fain investigate. Kukushu, Graha, Tia, might I trouble you for your assistance? Graha, but of course. My thanks. We shall head outside the abode if you would kindly follow me. Ishtola. I know not what mischief you're plotting, Arianje, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. Yeah, why aren't you inviting everyone? The rest shall go ahead to Elegea, Elegea, Elegea. Lest you worry, we won't start without you. Yeah, it's, why are you being even a little bit shady? I know that you're not at this point, but I mean, you have a history, so I don't blame Ishtola for being like, I trust you, so don't do anything I wouldn't do, like that sort of thing. Like the kind of thing where the fact that you have to say that means that you're kind of looking askance a little bit. Even if you do actually trust him at this point. The wellspring of regret. Raha. A spring and a sizable one at that. I hadn't noticed it amidst the dunes. The wellspring of regret. Okay. Aye, this place shall serve. This place is just so uh, incredible looking. Is it the spring you wish to investigate? I don't know what he's up to. Pray forgive my friends, but there is not to investigate. It was but a pretense to speak in private. Yeah, I got that, but... Graha, you have our undivided attention. What's going on? As we have established here in Ultima Thule, those denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed are the simulacra that they believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? I mean, we saw something similar in Amarot, so it's not like... out of the realm of possibilities for people with access to that ancient magic. That's m That was my assumption, that this is a recreation by Medion, like, for the sake of... showing us the despair. Oh, Medion has taken their hearts unto herself, so it's not a not a performative thing. It's not like to convince us of anything. It's just when she contacted them, like they made an impact on her and she's expressing that impact through magic, I guess. Good point, Kakushu. I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> if Medion can take the emotions of others as her own, I dare say she would be able to recreate them more faithfully than she had she relied on any historical account. Maybe that's going to be the answer to defeating Medion, is to make her connect with our, like, more positive memories. Not to defeating her, because I think we'll still have to, I don't think we're going to convince her, and that's it. I think we're going to have to... Clearly, she's going to be a final boss, but... Maybe that's a way to, like, break through her initial defenses and, and to the point where we'll actually be able to have a reasonable fight against her. By which logic? She must have visited them while they still lived. The dragons and the Aya both. I mean, maybe, but she talked in the scene with, um, in the scene where she was reporting in, where she was, had stopped saying, like, no, don't make me talk, final talk, like, connection established. Like, after, when she was reporting in at that moment, she mentioned that she was, like, she had, no, this was ethically at the very end. She had told, before she turned, uh, turned into her current form, that she started talking about how... Um, sorry, my train of thought's still boarding at the station. It gets derailed sometimes. She was starting to talk about how she... How she communed with the spirits of the dead. So very, still, it wasn't his, reading historical records, but they weren't necessarily still living. So too did I theorize, and upon that assumption, consider how these two races may have met their demise. 
According to thine own tale, Meteon perceiveth the emotions of those nearby as her own. Yes, a heightened sense of empathy intrinsic to her nature as an entelechy. In the course of her star-faring journey, if she encountered beings who strongly desired the cessation of their existence... Yeah, I mean, that's not really new, but... She would be powerless before that desire. Yeah, again, that's not not quite new. Like we got this, we got that sense from from our time in Elpis. Even as she possesseth the power to grant it, the power of Dynamis, is my supposition that overwhelmed by their longing for death, Medion did unleash Dynamis and usher the dragons and the Aea unto their doom. That I didn't make the the connection of. So they were already reeling. And she was like, fine, I'll be able to grant your wish. I mean, what did she say to... What did she say to Hermes when he refused her offer to go to, to go with her? That she would have granted him the gentlest end. And so maybe that's what she... That must be what she did to those... To these races. That's... I didn't think of that. Of course, such was not always the outcome. Full many stars did she find already lost to ruin. In order to create a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourselves this. In the place where you stand, whose is the soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion? I'm I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not talking. I'm I'm thinking so a th few things are coming to mind. One, is he talking not just about... Because at first I'm thinking, is he talking about that's how we find who to talk to, to... Um, how do we find... Like, before we had to find the Keystone Dragon to really get past. But I don't think that's what he's... Like, that's the one who is yearning for Oblivion most. But I don't think that's what he's talking about. I think he's saying that's why... Thancred was the one who broke through before, and then maybe th he's implying that in each context, Thancred was yearning most for Oblivion, and then at the end, Astinian was. But no, that's almost the opposite. Is it a question then of who's yearning most for Oblivion and then find the person of our group to counter that? I don't know. But he's clearly... I think he... I mean, the reason... The other thing that's coming to mind is that we're doing this... He didn't say... He didn't pull... Kakushu and um and uh, Cat Lady aside, he pulled Kakushu and Graha aside because he's thinking that she's the one who's probably gonna be most longing for oblivion, something like that, or most tempted. I don't know. But that that tells me why she didn't invite her. He didn't invite her to this little meeting. There again would I betray your trust. This pledge I did make to my comrades. In bringing thee into my confidence, I would remain true to my word. Unless he's saying that he's the... No, because then why shut her out? As for thee, let us consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Exarch. So he's asking us to harbor a secret of his. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy side, full knowing we were bound for thy demise. I ask now that thou returnest the favor, and abide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. Yeah, so he's he's the one who's going to jump on the grenade this time. You say my death has come due, how am I to refuse? A rough burden to put on him. Is indelicate of me, I know full well, but I can be but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even if I must needs go to such lengths, I cannot feign ignorance of the answer I have found within. Is this the Shadowbringer's music? I think it is. The answer to the question, in what moment might I stand strongest? After all that we've been through, I will say only this. Do what you must. Do what you must and see your conviction through. I shall, my friend. I shall. 
Without further ado, let us go to join our comrades. So he sees his own end coming up shortly. This really could be the end of these. Like, this could be just... I know that they're looking to get a clean slate almost for the next expansion. And so maybe this is just like wiping the slate clean of Scions. Let us be off too to Elgea. The a rough burden your pick up put on you, but goes around comes around, I guess. Abode of the Aea or Elgea. Alpha no. I understand you've taken care of business. If you're ready to begin, then so are we. Alize. While we waited, we mentioned our star's situation to the Aya. They nodded sagely, or something to that effect. <laughs> yeah, I could I could see Alize getting a little bit frustrated with these. I don't think she is, but I, I could see that happening. Like she's not on the same wavelength as these. Aya. Orianje. Come, let us hear the Aya's tale and learn what caused such enlightened beings to crave nihility. Braha. Don't mind me. He's still processing what he... Oh. That's rough business. How are you folks doing? Oh, you are here already. Your comrade said you would be late. Nenij. It would seem your star too has been plunged into a panic-induced cataclysm. We hope our tale will not serve to exacerbate it. Lalak. We are prepared for our recounting. To facilitate comprehension, the information will be simplified to match your primitive minds. They are the friggin' Moonanites. Dudik. Your companion in front, the one called Ishtola. He seems the keenest to learn the truth. I pity her. That's why I thought he was... I agree. That's why I'm so surprised that... Urian J seems to think he's the one who's going to... to kind of take the bullet in this in this particular island when it seemed like Ishtola was the one being primed for that. Ishtola. Seems everyone is accounted for. Shall we then? Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter, which you will not. Yeah, this is like, this is sort of like, um, this is not the New England Journal of Medicine. This is like Science Magazine. This is like them trying to share with us their knowledge, like, to communicate as basically lay people for these purposes. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific yeah. methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. I love those voices that they're giving them. We acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet Three. So the fact that they are in this, that we are in the same as them, tells confirms Orianje's theory that that Medion is the one who caused it in the most direct ending, even if she didn't precipitate the despair. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress. We will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. That's kind of you. You are entirely too kind. <laughs> I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. Hop. <laughs> In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Right. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart 
as will their finite thermal energies. Over like billions of years, right? Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter onto an eternal ice age. Right. Like in the super long term, though, and I guess you're, I mean, you're beings that have extended their lives indefinitely, so I guess you might eventually see it. But for us, that doesn't, it might impact us in a philosophical sort of way, like, you know, how some people, I'm just kind of multitasking by petting the cat, um, like how some people uh, hear about the eventual heat death of the universe and it really sends them into a funk, even though clearly it's not going to impact them immediate in any direct way. Uh, or in any tangible... Because it clearly does impact them in a tangible way. It's not going to impact them... Like, they're not going to burn up as a result of that, or freeze, or whatever. But still, the idea of it can disturb them. These people, it could actually eventually impact, but... In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous... We scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. But again, are you saying that this was like an imminent everlasting winter, or that, again, this is like hundreds of billions or trillions of years down the line? The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end. And there is no way to prevent it. Okay. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still. Like a lot of time. It was cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom accumulated since the dawning of our kind would be forever lost. And it is rougher for them because they do perceive time differently than we do. It's like, I don't know, it's like in Tolkien, if the humans hear about the oncom the eventual death of the universe versus the elves who can live, like, forever, basically. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. And I don't mean to discount what they're going through. Like, that is bleak the as hell. It was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Yeah. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. I mean, when you hear about people who are immortal, like, that's one of the things that scares me most about it. Not even the possibility of what could happen to you on Earth, but... If you're immortal, if, the, if you're in a fantasy world where you have true immortality, you have to think not just about, like, staying young for hundreds of years. You have to think about, like, what it's going to be like to suffer, to just float in space for the trillions of years after the Earth dies. Because you're immortal, right? You can't die, so... Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Yeah, that makes sense. At least they had the ability to, to ability to. It wasn't true or mortality. They had the ability to undo it if the, at their choice. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this. Understand aught of our tale. You will abandon your quest for knowledge. I flinch right now because my cat just bit my foot. He's rolling around, flopping if around there. Truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. 
feels like a society that never had a single humanities major in it. But this is also hitting her pretty hard, hitting Ishtola pretty hard. Or is it? So that's your story. That camera zoom at made me think she's going to be like a reversal where she's going to like do the reverse Uno on them. Like, that's it? That's all you got? While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Yeah. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? I think she's suggesting that you can accept that eventually you'll die, but doesn't mean that everything, but eventually everything dies, but it doesn't mean that what came before has no worth. Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. In my mortal years? Oh, okay. Like she's saying, not, not that now I'm in the now I am immortal, but in when when I was mortal, no, she's just saying like throughout all of my short time, there's no way I could get to where you are. But of one thing am I absolutely certain: I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no. You mustn't. The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. No. It is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. Amen. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. Blink, blink. The universe may end, and all may be for naught. But I will live as I always have. Oh, bless you, Ishtola. I will always seek out new knowledge. And no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. What a badass. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. I mean, I think we can fathom it. It's just... Just because you can... I don't know. It, it doesn't mean you have to sink. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. Again, that bird form. Yeah, oh, interesting. She she sees that too, and she's... Are these all extensions of Medion herself thing? Because we know that that's the... Well. We know that's the symbol that the, the symbol she took on. So maybe these all... Because we know that these aren't actual spirits of the Aea. They, like, like, I don't remember, someone said last time, uh, or earlier, that these are reflections of their, or memories of them. And so, even though it seems like we're talking to those me those spirits, we're really talking to Medion here. I think that's what the bird is meant to, the him turning into this bird is meant to symbolize, or meant to, Im to imply or show. Body will soon dissipate. There may be a way to restore it. Hmm. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. Okay, good. But you mustn't. For it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. But we can evoke the magic later though, right? We came here knowing what victory may cost. So press on. Press on. And do not look back. I, I, so I really think we're going to be able to summon them back, like, at the end. Are you joining her? I 
shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. But what's the point? We don't need the. Do <laughs> She's happy my about it. Hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions and afterwards been stricken with regret. Maybe it's just that we eventually have to, like, fill up Medion's non-despair meter, and so whenever each character can kind of... If each... If, if Arianje can add to it, can, can add his... Because maybe Ish, uh, Ishtola's sacrifice here wouldn't alone, alone wouldn't be enough. Or maybe it's just a, a gesture of, as a friend. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, like your I may facial hair. claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus, so good to see Ishtola smile. That thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. Yeah, these are all ways to negate this... To urge us on. How could we possibly fail? Ways to negate this particular brand of despair from Medion. This, 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 uh... manifestation of it, at least. It's not a surprise at this point. What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? What do you mean? What do you mean rekindled? That's right. Our quest doesn't end here. We'll press on, and we will find you. I mean, I know what rekindled means, but like... What about what just happened rekindled their civilization? Was that the implication that when they disappeared that they were broken through, they were gotten through to, that that memory was not changed, but like impacted in such a way that like those, those the, those uh, incarnations of those memories were like themselves convinced. There, that's where you'll find me. What is that? Is that because each of these areas seems to be a ruined world? Which ruined world is that? Seems to be the biggest and most important. Is that? Another star. Yeah, star, sorry. Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star or in its absence, a larger flow. And eventually, they are reborn. Yes, okay. So, like, a life stream type of deal that we've seen before. Alive again. To know suffering anew. And so were you trying to turn off the life streams? True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. And she does believe it's a gift. Like, I, I buy that. There's no mwahaha here. We created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead son. Hmm. 
attain it if you can. Before your friend's emotions fade away. Along with their protection. So is your goal then to... Because this seems like the answer to your... This seems like your infinity gauntlet. Like the thing that you can, you know, one snap and... It's, you know, everything is... You, you accomplish your goal. Like this feels like the way to do that for you. So... Is your goal then eventually to turn this on and just like have it pop open and unmake all possible births and start of life everywhere? Hmm. Where knowledge leads. Ba, 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 ba. Victory. Oh boy. Alpha no. Never have I felt such emptiness. It's as if a part of me is gone. Understandable. Alize. I'm fine, Kakushu. Like I said, our quest doesn't end here. It's. <laughs> Just getting knocked off one by one. I'm... I'm thinking specifically of the end of, of this... Uh, other games have done this too. Other Final Fantasy games have done this too. And spoilers for the end of Final Fantasy IX are close to... Or one of the, one of the big climactic sections. One of my favorite parts in all of Final Fantasy. It's this... Whole section... Uh, not at the very end, but kind of in, in near the end where... The main character is going through a major Z Zidane or Zidane is going through a major existential crisis about his existence and his purpose in life. And as he he's kind of his the the party members who have kind of grown to appreciate him are trying to help him, and he just keeps fighting them off, pushing them away. But as he stumbles from one room to the next, like one joins and then the next joins and then the next joins, and I wonder if we're gonna get. Something like that when the party members just kind of one by one come back to us. I hope we do. I don't want them to be gone. It's po like it's coming more and more to me that it's possible. I don't think they're going to be gone like for good now, but it's possible they won't survive the point .0 expansion or that some or a number of them won't. Uh, but I, I don't think we're ready. I'm no, I won't think about that just yet. It's hurt. It's weird to say I won't think about that just yet because it, it really is like it's impactful. It's it. it the thought of it is is dis depressing as bleak. Braha. Victory lost. I don't know what the stuff in the middle between law between victory and lost are supposed to be. Victory something, something lost. It may be a reference again to like a song or something. Braha to regards his comrades in solemn silence. Also, the music in this whole section is a... It also... Sorry to get re other game reference but it reminds me very strongly of the parts before the final battle of the um, base game of Undertale. That music, that hopeful music in a time that really doesn't feel like it should be hopeful. Are you all ready to continue on? Then let us make for that light where... To, for where that light shone. Stola and Durianje have opened the way for us. Hmm. The tube. The tube. What do you mean the tube? Why is this place called the tube? Is this a tube? Alize. Some manner of a device. If our friends awakened it, then it should be safe to use. Is it like a reference to the tube as like the the British subway? Like, it'll take us from one place to the next? Graha, judging by the direction, this should be the place. Alpha, no. Yes, I can feel it. The ether emanating from the arcane pattern. This is a portal and no mistake. Let us see where it leads. Portal of Wisdom. 
off we go. Travel through the portal. No. I think I'm going to call it here for this session because it looks like we're going to move to the next area next time. And we will continue then. So thanks for watching. I will see you all later. If you like this, I feel awkward saying this, but I think if I, I think it's the sort of thing you, I don't know. Oh, whatever. If you enjoyed the video, I certainly appreciate a like on it. If you want to see more of the, these videos, subscribe. If you don't, don't subscribe. If you don't, if you didn't enjoy the video or don't feel neutrally bad, then you don't have to like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.